colorful, colorful, colorful foe, the comedian colorful, on colorful, 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 colorful radio. radio. Oh, hey, that's me. So you have joined me by the comedian, uh, Iman, Michelle, and our special guest, Antoinette Page, here in the studio with a very special edition. Not that, you know, all of our editions are special, but this one, this one in particular is in celebration of International Women's Day. And uh, we've been uh, quizzing Antoinette during the break. And she's, we've been trying to save it for you guys because it's also exciting and interesting. Um, so let's commence the grilling on air, that's what mm. I say. Um, that song, Do What That Thing, definitely a message to men and women in their guys. You know if you're just about, everyone knows someone who's just about that thing. No, it takes over their whole life. There's nothing else. Morning, noon and night. You know that person. Uh, and ladies, beware of the trap. Guys, beware of the trap because you're killing yourself and others too. There you go. On that bombshell of a note... Michelle? Right, so Antoinette, let's let's carry on with the grilling then. No, I'm joking. It's not going to be grilling. No, we just want to we want to get to know a little bit more about who you are because yeah. you're very involved in all sorts of things here and in the Caribbean. So tell us a little bit about what you do. Yeah, so so hi everybody and thanks for tuning in. So I am a founder of an organisation called Heritage Consultancy Network and I also do multiple voluntary projects on behalf of the community here um, in London predominantly and also in Jamaica. Mm. So I work with um, Diaspora Connect um, which is led by Rudy Page. Okay, right, cool. So one of the things that interested me is that you are British born. Um, yep. Your uh, your parents are Jamaican, is that yep, right? Yeah, both okay. parents are Jamaican. Yep. And um, you have a real affinity to Jamaica, uh, which isn't the case for everyone because some people who were born here don't necessarily even go back to the country where their mm-hmm. parents are from. So what is it about Jamaica that, that really kind of captured your heart? So as a child, I used to travel with my grandmother, mm. who's actually my first inspiration um, with regards to working overseas okay. and working for poor, you know, deprived communities. So I started to travel with her. And literally on my first trip as a small child, as I got off the plane and back then you had to walk on the sort of the airstrip <laughs> to get into the airport and the heat, the vibe, the people, it, it just captivated me. Wow. And it's never left me. So uh, over the last 20 odd years, I've tried to visit Jamaica, if not once, but even two or three times a year to continue her work and wow. obviously now my work. Mm. And what is the work that you do out there? So in, in Jamaica, I run um, and work with the Early Childhood Commission of Jamaica. So I'm one of their affiliated partners. And what the work I do is to help school, so early years schools from who have children from zero to five year olds who who go to school in, you know, not so nice conditions. Mm. So it's my so sorry my work and what I do is to to give back Mm. in essence and to use the diaspora to give back through food programs which we've now completed we fed up to 200 children last year and I'm now working with them on renovation and looking at resources to get their schools certified and to become certified schools great and is this across the island or is this in Uh, particular parts of Jamaica so I'm currently working with my home parish which is Clarendon so I'm working with the the shout out there I see the (laughs) Clarendon Clarendon. there you go I'm plugging it I'm plugging it everybody Mrs Morris I'm plugging it so I'm working with um, principal Mrs Morris um, and she runs the Ricci's Early Childhood Institute and we're really pushing and we've just launched our Just Giving campaign if I can plug that to um, raise a thousand pounds to help Mrs Morris and the children and the teaching staff to become certified and it's really needed wow. what can people how can people find a uh, just given page yep so just given page is um the link is on um, the heritage consultancy um facebook and also on our twitter feed so you know please do give if it's five pounds ten pounds as i say every little make a muckle in jamaica mm-hmm. and you know every amount does help and it will go towards a great great result because we need to get our schools out there certified and the definition of a certification means your child has a safe clean environment to not only go to play but also grow and learn and that's what it's about great wow um one of the other things that really interests me is finding out a little bit more about the differences between women here 
and women in Jamaica. What are the challenges? What are the strengths, weaknesses? What what are the differences that you're finding? So from my observations, I think, you know, like most underdeveloped countries and Jamaica's striving to achieve its developed status by it, through its vision 2030 um, and that is to, to you know to, to ensure that you know their economy is stable they have it's a place where they, they can you know place where we can all do business where we can grow our family and a place where we can go and trade and invest and I think going to Jamaica over the years there, there has been multiple step changes but the huge one for me um, this year and last year is to see that the diaspora is really being welcomed in. So, you know, working home and abroad is coming to life mm. and going back home. Okay, great. Okay, well, so we're going to ask you some more questions after a little bit more music. Thank you so much for that, Antoinette. Okay, so this is Colourful Radio. Colourful, 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 colourful radio. That's the one and only Janet Jackson with control. Seth, definitely a, a song and, well, actually the video I more remember for different reasons. But I, um, I remember seeing her in this uh, black attire with a military style cap on. With all these uh, other ladies in military military attire, type attire, we'll say, dancing in a sort of uh, square sal- square uh, military style with salutes, um, and that for me was quite uh, a clearly it stuck in my mind. Uh, it's quite iconic. Mm-hmm. See, I'm being very cl- I'm being very careful here, but no, that's genuinely what I got from it. Whether it has, and she is known for her sexually provocative movie, whether it had a mu- music, sorry. Um, whether it has those, whether that's the reason it resonates with me, I don't know. But it was definitely a different kind of, um, she was definitely a different kind of singer at the time. And it's interesting because she uh, she started out, she's the youngest child of the Jackson 5. And she started out in uh, TV as well. So she was in Good Times and Fame. And she had this really wholesome character about her. You know, her hair was gently flicked and she wore cardigans and... And and in her early music career, she followed that style as well. And this track here marks the breaking of that mould. Um, it marks the breaking away from that wholesome, innocent image, which up until then, many women were forced to portray. And it at least symbolises that she's in control, whether she was at that stage or not, I don't know. Um, but I do remember she had a, a, bit, a, a bit of a struggle with... The image she had, she didn't like it, but her um, her producers and the record label were saying, no, 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 look, stick to what you know. People like you. They've seen you on these family shows. This is what sells. And I know she wanted to do more things like this. And this track here was the one that broke the mould for her. Now, arguably, because she's known for her sexually provocative lyrics, there's a thin line, I would say, between sexualization and, uh, you know, being sexually provocative but I'd say she was less close to that thin line than, say, someone like Madonna. Possibly. Your thoughts, ladies? Okay, so for me, yeah, I, I do agree. And I, I do remember being around seeing, you know, the, the videos mm-hmm. at that time. Um, but I think it was more around, perhaps, my observation and opinion would be, you know, Janet's taking control yeah. so in her mind she's taking control of her her music she's taking control of her video she's taking control of her writing because she also wrote music so i think it's just an ex- her expression that mm-hmm. actually yes i i am the the girl next door and that's mm-hmm. what i've been portraying but actually i'm also a sexy woman yeah and i want to express that through my music that's yeah. how i took it <laughs> <laughs> and we're glad you did both but yeah that, that you know that's how I, I saw the change in, in 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 Janet Jackson's work yeah I would I would agree with that I mean control is whatever it meant to her you know we might look at it and think well mm-hmm. how much control did she even have over her career but maybe it meant something bigger to her I would say that a lot of the artists now have taken it much further in terms of sexualization as well and I yeah yeah. it's it's, it's in the name isn't it really yeah well exactly so yeah I'm I'm not I don't know I don't like the direction that it's gone in necessarily for a lot of the female artists uh, unfortunately but what about Antoinette what about the 
kind of things that that you're finding between you know you obviously run an organization and you work abroad what are you finding in terms of the control that women can have over their lives over their businesses their organizations are you what uh, what are your thoughts on that so so many women do you know i i see such a difference between you know being here and black britain um with regards to who i see as leaders of various organizations but also multinational organizations and charities because i've come from a corporate background my my background is finance finance mm. so at a time where having a black woman in a boardroom yeah that was unheard of there's been times where i've been the only person of color in many meetings wow. we're talking senior stakeholders of huge corporations mm -hmm. i tended to be the only person of color and i you know see a difference when i travel especially across the caribbean because you see persons of color more you know more women mm. now you know really leading you know in government agencies different you know figureheads charities you know teachers you know you, you see many 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 more women that look like me have mm. come look like my mother have come through you know their own sort of journeys but they're sending the elevator back down. And I, I really want to um, give a huge shout out to Sherry Ann Dixon for that phrase, because she, it, her and I had done some coaching sessions many years ago, and she taught me the value of sending the elevator back down and making sure that when we do reach a particular level in whatever we do, it doesn't have to be business, but even as a family member, church member, continue to encourage the next generation mm, yeah. I, like Cause, that. Cause I like that because saying. that that's what matters yeah i like that saying too many people pull up the ladder in it no more yeah. i'll be yeah. the only no one here and when i, I want to be there, special i'm <laughs> gonna sit there yeah and i'm not gonna share i'm not gonna engage i'm not gonna include but actually you know sherry's awesome she's a motivational speaker she runs women of the crossroads and, and i sincerely salute her for that because that changed a lot of my thinking a lot of my behaviors and many of you who know me in the community know I always send that elevator back mm. down, not just to young girls and young women, but also men as well. Yeah, sure. And so your daughter yes. has travelled with you quite a yes, lot to Jamaica. Lot. Yep. And yep. what is she? What do you think the effect is having on her of seeing you, her mum, doing everything that you're doing, and also seeing women of colour in those sorts of high-profile, high-level roles? Um, so my daughter Malia is seven and she has no problem in describing to you what she wants to do when she gets older. Malia wants to be a fashion model, she wants to design, <laughs> she wants to draw. She also at the moment writes musical lyrics. Um, there's no stopping her creativity. So Mal Malia is extremely confident and you know we're all blessed and really pleased that, that she, she's a sponge. She just <laughs> soaks up her environment. She's seven and been to Jamaica six times. If you ask Malia tomorrow, wow. oh, Malia, you know, where are you from? What's your roots? What's your background? She will never describe herself as black British. She will automatically say to you, I'm Jamaican. Wow. Yeah. And you see that, you know what they say, the apple doesn't fall far from the tree. <laughs> we were talking about this um, before you came on air. And just one of the important things that I think, I think you said was, it's amazing how much they pick up when you don't think they've been paying attention. And you obviously that goes both ways. When you think they yep. can't see you, they see you. Mm. But, you know, the positivity that you bring and that you exude, they pick it up when you're not conscious of it. When mm. you think they haven't known, uh, you know, they haven't been paying attention. They have been. My niece, uh, my niece, the eldest of my nieces, has a, has a really <laughs> special gift for absorbing things. And... When we're talking, you know how sometimes you have a conversation and you don't want a child to know or you think children aren't paying attention? We look at her body language and it tells us she has developed a way of listening and pretending like she's doing something else <laughs> when her, she's almost frozen in her uh, interest in your conversation. <laughs> and that's how we spot and we know how to change, her, change that. But they are always, always listening. Um, and positivity they, they, they'll get that in word and deed mm. more importantly in deed it's yeah. not what you yeah. say it's not what you say it's what you do yeah because they'll quickly tell you about what you do if yeah. you say something differently right absolutely it's what it's you have to model it to them don't you and i'm sure that she will achieve exactly what she's saying she's going to because she's seeing you achieve she sees the hard work i do and she sees 
you know, I'm not saying it's always easy and, and, and running organizations voluntarily, I, you know, so far I don't get paid for the things that I do. I, you know, I, I do it selflessly and, and it sometimes costs me personally. But you know what? I don't regret doing any of it and I'll keep doing it. Wow. This is Colourful Radio. Colourful, 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 colourful radio. So you've just been listening to Chronics Likes, and that was a song choice by our guest, Antoinette. So tell us why you chose that song. So Michelle, I chose that song because it, it just summarises the way that I think, the way that I work. And, and, and I just appreciate that, you know, it's not all about getting credibility on social media or doing it for, you know, mm. hype or, you know, t- to get people to like your, mm-hmm. your, your pages or your work or just be liked, literally. Yeah. You just do it because you love what you do and do what you love. Absolutely. Um, one of the things I was thinking about, because you do so much work in Jamaica and I was wondering have you ever considered just moving there or do you think that you can do more for Jamaica by being based here? I think at the moment where I am in my life, I am quite happy commuting between the two and actually perhaps even extending it to additional work that I'm, I'm looking forward to doing in the future in Africa. So, wow. yeah, so I work alongside a lady called Isatu Harrison, who's a fashion designer and knows the brand Izelia, so Izelia Fashion. And at the moment, we're, we're launching our foundation so mm-hmm. Izelia is launching its foundation and we're working with young women and also women that have gone through sexual exploitation mm-hmm. poverty mm-hmm. gender you know disaster domestic violence mm-hmm. and, and child abandonment so mm-hmm. we're working with those women currently and we're creating a platform for them to showcase their creativity and their work so I see a trip to Africa yeah. coming along fairly soon so to say would I live just in you know the UK or Jamaica at the moment I think I'm just going to be a, a woman of the world Michelle great I'm planning a trip to Jamaica for Iman <laughs> yeah, yeah. I'm planning yeah. it for you you need to get yourself there <laughs> I'm telling you <laughs> Iman has never been to Jamaica <laughs> no yeah so, I, I have to make amends on that one Paul Malia is um, the globetrotter in the family so Iman <laughs> needs to catch up defo defo you need to get those uh, your carbon footprint like Bigfoot yeah you need to find your way to Jamaica because you know they've got a bobsleigh team right yeah, and no, much yeah. much more Nigeria has a and bobsleigh team and a female team well. bobsleigh team too and yeah just yeah. taking part so yeah if you've just joined us we're talking about all things woman <laughs> in light of the fact that it was International Women's Day earlier this week. It was, but before we get on to that, because you, you posed another question, Bo. I did, didn't I? Um, about International Men's Day and whether or <laughs> not we actually need one. Well, I did. And every year people start try to start a campaign to start an International Men's Day. And the sad fact is, or the sad thing is, there is an International Men's Day already. Bonus points for anyone who knows what day International Men's Day is. And I will not give you enough time to Google it. Is it April the 1st? When is it what? <laughs> it's the 19th of November. Oh. That very special day alongside Father's Day that's held with reverence <laughs> <laughs> all over the world. We do treat Father's Day and Mother's Day differently, don't we? We do, we Mother's do. Day, people, people snatch up flowers from... They rip it from the neighbour's garden if they have to. Father's Day, I don't, it's just... just just not the same. I don't know Just why. Just to remind you on that, Bo, actually, Mother's Day is tomorrow. Yes. Mothering Sunday is yes. tomorrow. Yes, yes. Too right. So uh, it's a double whammy, isn't it? We're mm. celebrating women all over the shop. And meanwhile, uh, Men's Day is languishing in the forgotten. <laughs> <laughs> Whether people the- knew about International Men's Day, um, they said that we uh, effectively need to celebrate men and women equally. But, you know, in the, in the context of... Uh, oppression women have faced it more acutely than men and this is a man's world but ultimately we seek equality true no we do we do and 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 i think that sort of leads into some of the the work i i do so i i do write i have started to write my own blog so you know people can have a look at some of the work i've done which is um, on my social media pages of heritage consultancy networks we're on facebook we're on Twitter, IG, so Instagram, and I also have a blog site. And the reason for me creating the blog is to make sure we do share hmm. stories of equal value and, and making sure we have our, a platform to share our voice. 
because I believe that it's all about preserving and promoting our cultural heritage. And that's really why I decided to find, to found, sorry, a space where we can have that work. Mm -hmm. So throw those links out again, where how can people find you on the socials? Yeah, so Heritage Consultancy Network has Facebook, Twitter and Instagram. And also on there, you'll get a link straight to my blog posts. So please do visit, share, subscribe to our YouTube as well. Iman's done an awesome job on creating our YouTube pages. So, so just so you know, or you may not know, Bo, on Monday, Iman launched his media company. Yes, I, so, I, I, need, I, to follow, yeah. I need to so, follow you so on So Iman YouTube. is now um, Mo- name, Moody's What's Production. The name? the name is Media Custom Productions. Media Custom Productions. Look yeah, out so for he's big now, things from Iman. He's now doing all my production work. Wow, Look awesome. At Look at that. I'm going to get some more comments on uh, surrounding another question that I asked. Gosh, time flies when you're having fun. I need to get these some of these comments in. This is a really interesting one. So I asked the question, it's International Women's Day. So ladies tell me, or people tell me in fact, what do you need from men? And here's an interesting one um, from Charlene Linton. Interesting question, she says. What springs to mind is that men need to stop thinking of women as emotionally erratic versions of men. We have a whole different set of needs, men who are open and ready to receive women without labelling them as crazy, difficult and impossible to understand. Women, conversely, need to stop treating men like they are socially inept versions of women. Lol, seriously. Uh, Men operate completely differently to women and need to get to know them as they are not what we think they should be. Wow. There's some food for four, yeah. eh? Yeah. It's a whole there's meal. There's a lot. It's a lot um, to chew on. Lot to and I'll read out another, another comment from Brandon Brunson. We need honesty, exclamation mark. If you don't want anything serious, say so. If you're not finished, finished with your ex, say that. Nobody can blame you for how honest how honestly you feel about things. And you can't be called out on something you admit to. And uh, someone else has said, we actually need nothing. I need nothing, uh, nothing (laughs) from men. And and I'll get one more on. And it's uh, Jen Borplin who says, just be nice as always, yet perhaps a little extra with a smiley face. Yeah. Mm. Full range of views there. Yeah. I don't need nothing from you, man. None at all. (laughs) None at all. Um, so yeah we're going to get some more music on this is Colourful Radio um, Antoinette Page here in the studio telling us about her journey through the charity sector as a woman and um, yeah we're, we're very privileged to have you here in the studio just throw out those social links again yep so we can be found on um, Facebook Twitter um, Instagram and YouTube under Heritage Consultancy Network um, as I said it's it's around you know sharing and promoting and preserving our African Caribbean heritage. And I, I just wanted to get one more question that we were trying to, Michelle and I were trying to squeeze in, which is around your inspirations. Um, who has inspired you? I know you've, you've mentioned a few names already, but some of the, some of the people who've helped you along uh, your journey, and, and also I'll make it a two-part question, is it difficult having a, a, a family and engaging with in all the, we'll call it extracurricular activities that you engage in? So, yeah, I'd like to definitely give shout outs to my mum, my, my mother earth. So she, obviously she's my, my wholesome and my first inspiration. Um, my, my grandmother, as I said, Sherry Ann Dixon, Dawn Butler, who's the MP of Brent Central. Dawn and I worked together and throughout that, period of time you know we really went through personal journeys together um, and, and, and as we worked through London 2012 for you know Jamaica representing Jamaica for the Olympics so, so that was a huge growth period for me um, multiple friends family members work colleagues too many too many to mm-hmm. mention um, but you know conversely and your second part of your question Bo we've having a family, our three children. I've always worked full time um, and I've all, all, also done, you know, the voluntary work outside of that. So it, it has been tough. I'm not gonna, you know, say to you, there hasn't been challenges, there have. Um, I've gone through divorce. So, you know, not just because of work, but 
the change in your family dynamics will also impact upon you know some choices you have to make and mm. and some of the sacrifices you have to make but i would still encourage any woman whether she's single she has children or she she's wanting to adopt children have a family or no family just follow your dream if you have a dream and an aspiration to do something bring it to life make mm. a difference and enjoy the journey Awesome. Colorful, 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 colorful radio. Natural beauty, you know. Can no I never been someone shy until I seen your eyes. Still I had to try. Yeah. Oh yes. 